Not being able to afford rehab while searching the internet, I found a new drug treatment that breaks the addiction to opium. It seems like being addicted is punishment enough. I can't even begin to imagine having the law involved. I mean, how many people have you known in your life now whose lives have been affected directly by the drug war? Many, 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 many people. I mean, good, good people, good talented people. It makes as much sense to me to put this gifted actor Robert Downey Jr. in jail for his cocaine problem, and regretfully he certainly seems to have one, as it would have Betty Ford in jail for her alcohol problem. It's the same thing. But if Betty Ford or Robert Downey Jr. or you or I drive a motor vehicle while impaired by whatever drug you're talking about, be it marijuana, alcohol, cocaine, or whatever, that's a crime. Bring them to court. Bring them to people like me, and we will address their actions. That's an appropriate use of the criminal justice system. The media and the drug war have a long symbiotic relationship. During the last several years, Freeway Ricky Ross's legend continued to grow. A platinum-selling rapper using the name Ricky Ross tells stories that glorify Rick's life as a drug dealer. Ricky even had his own hour-long BET special, once again proving how a war-weary country has become immune to complete government corruption. However, in late 2005, Ricky did catch a break and got a sentence reduced down to a few years. Ricky Ross is really a good guy who took advantage of an opportunity. He, he was an entrepreneur, but he's at the bottom of the food chain, so he went to jail. All the guys that violated the law, that ignored congressional sanctions on Iran-Contra, they're all in power. And George Bush, a guy who never succeeded in anything and is certainly not succeeding at this presidency, a guy who stole two elections, who has committed at least 10 different impeachable offenses, he's president of the United States. South Central Los Angeles. Now I am completely and totally in favor of decriminalizing all drug use, period. Drug addiction, like alcohol addiction, is not a criminal problem. It's a medical problem, a social problem, a spiritual problem. Here we go. But, you know, the money incentive behind the drug war is so great that, you know, at, to shut this big, big machine that the rehab machine, prison machine, felonization machine, this whole other, you know, uh, uh, thing that they have going down is going to take a, a, a real revolution. But Emiliano Zapata once said, you know, I'd rather die on my feet than be living on my knees for the rest of my life. The next big step is the people refusing to uh, pay taxes or to reelect people. In fact, I see 80 million Americans getting themselves organized to the point where they can tell Congress that if it doesn't dramatically reduce what we spend on a heavy metal military, on secret intelligence, on prisons, which are actually slave farms, then these people will be fired. Are you ready for order? Give me um, two waffles, one breast. One side order of grits. Today's headlines solely focus on the war on terror, a war they say could last a hundred years. But what does this mean for the future of the drug war? 
The fans are listening. <laughs> You're going down if you use this phone. You should be much more afraid of First Data Corporation than of the CIA. It's private organizations that are cataloging everybody's information. Uh, they don't need warrants now to tap your, well, they never did for cell phones, but they don't need warrants to tap a lot of your electronic communications, which are not secure. I've been violated all my life, so it don't matter. There goes the Fifth Amendment. There goes the Fifth Amendment and the Sixth Amendment. Somebody didn't like that. Them coming out of admitting it is just an admission of guilt. So, life goes on. Life goes on. Back in Sheriff Joe's jail, the daily grind goes on. And in all honesty, as much as I wanted to hate Joe Arpaio, I was glad that some of the inmates I met were not living on my street. March time, march! Eighty percent of the cops shot in this area were shot because people are high on drugs. So we want to give drugs to everybody. Let them all shoot the cops. Growing up during Nixon's drug war, I can't even imagine how life would be without this drug prohibition. I often wonder who in my family might still be alive had they used naturally occurring drugs for both their medical and recreational needs. The government claims that the future of illegal drug use is heading towards synthetics, such as prescription abuse and crystal meth. This man lives in the most drug-infested area of Amsterdam. Much, much crystal meth here? Uh, no, I, didn't, I never heard about crystal meth. And what is it? Speed. Speed? Yeah. Oh, okay. In a place that has adopted a more Christian value towards organic substances that come from the earth, synthetic drugs like crystal meth are almost non-existent. Do you want your future to be this, or to stay on a pathway that allows a greedy few to profit from the felonization of sick people? It's a free-for-all on the street. Your kids can go and buy heroin and cocaine easier than they can get cigarettes and, and, uh, and, and alcohol. So there has to be some control. We're not going to legalize drugs. We're not going to do it. You know, we have actually done a terrific job in the United States reducing drug abuse. It's true. No one talks about making cigarettes illegal. So they're not protecting people. They're not protecting society. I can drive stone. I can't drive drunk. But alcohol's legal because I don't know how to make whiskey. Do you know how to make whiskey? Okay, put your hands in there now. Turn over pretty rapidly. Okay, I'll take a bite. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> It's like winging her. Uh -huh. <laughs>